Thank you, Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. Let me greet the, firstly, the progressive leadership of the fastest growing political party on the African continent, led by Commander-in-Chief and President Julius Malema, Commissars. Deputy Speaker, in the summer of AD 64, ancient Rome was ravaged by the fire that lasted for six days, leaving about half a population homeless and destroying about 70% of the infrastructure of the ancient city. While this was happening, their ineffectual, visionless, detached, greedy, self-hating murderers and selfish Empire Nero was fiddling and playing violence, unbothered by the destruction that was befailing the people he was supposed to lead. Today, here in the Republic of South Africa, we have a 21st century version of Nero, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, a leader who simply has no appreciation of the gravity of the mess that he and his people are causing. Nowhere in this destruction more apparent than in the current status of municipalities. Today in South Africa, 24% of the municipalities in the country are considered completely dysfunctional. These are municipalities that have no technical capacity to maintain existing infrastructure or initiate new infrastructure development projects. They have no capacity to provide any basic service to the people and are merely instruments of the facilitation of looting by the ruling party and those who, are kept, who have captured them in business. 111 out of 278 municipalities in this country, there is no coherent plan for service delivery. There is no capacity to prepare even basic financial statement leading to consistent negative findings by the Auditor General. The President only paid attention to the state of local government in his address to this House last week. He offered no solution about the need to restructure the nature of the funding of local government. Speaker, we all know that smaller rural municipalities have no other source of income other than what they get from the equitable share. This budget is so limited that after paying salaries, municipalities are left with absolutely zero. Municipalities such as Anahlati and Makana in the Eastern Cape have been consistently mismanaged for years. Today, Anahlati is unable to pay its workers at least until June this year. This is under the leadership of Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa, who ascend to this podium from time to time and say to Mamina. Deputy Speaker, you cannot continue blaming your one-sided notion of state capture for these failures. These failures lie squarely in your, in, in your door, Mr. Ramaphosa. You have failed the people of Amatlat, as you have failed the vast majority of the people living in dysfunctional municipalities in South Africa. The country will not be able to be fixed by your grand hallucination about the capacity of private sector to deal with our uh, developmental challenges. We need a strong, capable state with sufficient capacity to break the yoke of inertia that has engulfed all levels of government in this country. The president simply does not have the luxury to fiddle while the country burns. It ended badly for Nero, Mr. President. It will surely end very badly with you. Amongst your many failures, perhaps, your greatest crime is your lack of coherent, verifiable, and funded plan to deal with the scourge of gender-based violence. While this, we support the passing of the gender-based violence bills, we must surely acknowledge that the scourge of gender-based violence in this country is not a product of lack of legislation, 
but our country is engulfed in lawlessness, gender-based violence, because we do not have law enforcement agencies. Only a tiny fraction of reported GBV cases ever end up in successful prosecution. Thousands of cases never even get reported because women know that the police have no capacity or willingness to investigate such cases. The DNA laboratory, which is critical for the successful prosecution of rape cases, has completely collapsed under the leadership of Mr. Becky Tell, leading to the collapse of thousands of cases that depends on the DNA evidence in this country. The backlog in this forensic laboratory has catastrophic consequence for the victims of crime, particularly victims of violent crimes. While police fiddle, just like their political bosses, Bo Mr. Bekikele, crimes of sexual nature continues to rise in South Africa. Just between July and September last year, 9,556 women and girls were raped in this country. These, Mr. President, are statistics from your own Minister of Police, Mr. Becky Tele. This is a shame, therefore, that you cannot report an equal number of convictions for the same period. And I can tell you for free that more than 80% of those who perpetrated these crimes are not in jail today. But you still keep Mr. Becky Kele here as the minister. Deputy Speaker, as we battle the pandemic of Corona, we as women in this country must also battle with a pandemic that has no vaccine. Everywhere we go, we are always hunted. The gazing eye of South African men is forever fixed on their next victim. And they do this fully knowing that the state has got no capacity to catch them. In the Northern Cape, John Taolokhaetsewe District Municipality, the ANC appointed a speaker with multiple cases of sexual violence. Yet the ANC comes stand here, grandstand, making as if these things do not exist within their benches. They do. These are failures of the state, a state you are the president of. The buck stops with you, Mr. President. But you have never been interested in the actual work of governing. You are simply in love with the concept of being Mr. President and with the pecs that comes with that position. On behalf of the millions of people forced to live in dysfunctional municipalities, people who do not have reliable water supply, people who do not have access to reliable public health care system, people who feel victimized when they go to police station to report the violent violation of their rights. I condemn you complicity in their, in, in their crime, sir. I condemn you for seeming lack of interest in the plight of the majority of women and children of this country. Mr. President, I condemn you for your lack of vision, for your complicity in the corruption of looting and continue to that continues daily in this country. It happens right in your executive, right in your offices. Some ministers seated here today, even front with their own families to go and loot at funerals. Mr. President, South Africa deserves better, and that better is not you. It is not the ANC. Together with the people you lead, who have enabled the destruction of our country, we deserve to, you deserve to be thrown into the dustbin of history, violently so, and the EFF is going to make sure that that happens. Thank you.